Welcome to the video version of the very first lecture of CS61A in fall 2018. Videos like these will be posted to the course website before each live lecture, and they contain everything that I'm going to say in live lecture, all of the contents. There are a lot of students enrolled in this class. In fact, there are far more than will fit in the lecture hall at any given time. And these videos are an alternative to coming to live lecture. So if you choose, and it really is a choice, you can watch these videos instead of coming to live lecture, and you won't miss anything. But the point of these videos is not just crowd control. Lecture is not a bad way to convey information from one person to a large group of people, but it's not perfect. Sometimes live lectures are too fast. Sometimes they're too slow. Sometimes someone's listening to a lecture and they get distracted for just a moment, lose what's going on, and then spend the entire rest of the hour confused. And watching videos instead fixes a lot of these problems. You can speed up the video, slow it down, pause, rewind, and otherwise control the flow of the lecture however you want. When learning to program, it's particularly helpful because there will be lots of times when you want to play around with an example or explore what might happen if something changed, so you can pause the video and try that out without losing track of what's going on in lecture. Wow, with all these advantages, you might think that everybody watches the videos and nobody comes to live lecture. Well, that's not true. In recent semesters, I think about 70% of students have decided to switch over to video for most of the lectures. Sometimes they show up to live lecture once in a while just to remember what it's like. And then the other 30% come to live lecture quite regularly because they prefer the live experience. In live lecture, students can ask me questions. Sometimes I ask the students questions. And all the other students who come to live lecture are interested in being there because they had the choice to watch videos, but instead they showed up. So you're welcome to come to live lecture. I'll be there. Many other students will be there too. But you're also welcome to watch the videos. And you never have to worry about missing content or missing a pop quiz or anything like that. So how will you choose? I can't tell you which one's right for you. What I would suggest is that you come to the first couple of live lectures, see what it's like, and then maybe try a video. And you can always switch back and forth. You don't have to commit to one format or the other. So if you continue watching this video, you'll hear me saying exactly what I will say in live lecture, which means that if you plan on coming to live lecture one, you should stop watching this video now Otherwise, it will be completely redundant. You're still here? Oh, must be that you want to continue on with Lecture 1 material. So here we go. Welcome again to 61A. I'm John De Niro. There's my email address. You are welcome to email me directly at any time. You can also come talk to me in person. I hold office hours in my office, which is in Soda Hall, room 781. I'll hold office hours at 10.30 on Wednesdays, starting next week, 10 o'clock Thursdays. I will hold office hours this week, but I'm going to focus on administrative questions because people are trying to get enrolled and off the wait list and into section, etc. So this week only, I'm going to focus on administrative questions. Next week, I'm happy to talk about whatever you want in office hours. I also hold online office hours where I sit in my office, 781 Soda, but I talk to people on a video call. If you go to deniro.org, you'll find a link to that video call, and you're welcome to join from anywhere. So if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that without ever leaving your dorm room. I've noticed that in the first few weeks of the semester, a lot of students want to come to office hours. I think that's great, but sometimes it gets a little crowded. So as an experiment, for the first time ever, I'm going to hold a lot of extra office hours on Monday so that anyone who wants to come in, introduce themselves to me, ask questions about anything, the course or otherwise, tell me about what project you've been working on or what you'd like to work on, 
ask about resources. I'll be there for almost three hours on Monday afternoon, and I'm happy to talk to as many people as decide to show up. Even though there are a lot of students in this course and just one of me, I really would like to get to know many of you, and uh, that's only going to happen if you come to office hours, so I suggest you give it a try. The other option, instead of coming on Monday, is to wait a few weeks. In my experience, many fewer students come on week four than on week two, and so it's easier to have extended one-on-one -on -one conversations with students. So in the middle of the semester, why not come by office hours and chat? If there's a topic that you need to discuss with me one-on-one -on -one without anybody else in the room, I suggest setting up an individual appointment on denero.org slash meet.html where you can book time with me via Google Calendar. So my Wednesday and Thursday regular office hours are a little bit different. On the Wednesday office hour, it's just me. On Thursday, I will also bring my dog. This is my dog, Samosa. She's quite friendly. It's fine if you want to come to office hours just to pet the dog. If you want to talk about computer science, you can also come on Thursday. If you want to talk about computer science with no dog in the room, please come on Wednesday instead or join the online office hours. The fastest way to contact me is actually not email or office hours, but to post on Piazza, which I hope you've already joined. When you post on Piazza, anyone from the staff or the students could respond, and that means you can get questions answered quite quickly. You can also email me and two heads of the course staff, Alex and Nancy, at cs61a at berkeley.edu. Who are Alex and Nancy? Well, they're two members of the course staff. I don't teach this course alone. There's no way that I could teach this many students without a lot of great help. And fortunately, we've built up an incredible team. We have 52 teaching assistants. Here at Berkeley, they're known as graduate student instructors or undergraduate graduate student instructors. They teach lab and discussion sections. They will hold drop-in office hours as well. And they'll do lots of other stuff help me develop assignments, grade exams, etc. We'll also have 50 or more mentors. We're still in the process of hiring those. They teach mentoring sections, hold drop-in office hours, and lots of other stuff. Homework parties, mastery sections, etc. What are all these things? Well, you'll find out in due course. We'll also have 250 or more academic interns that are there to help answer your individual questions and check your progress. It's important to ask questions while you're learning this subject. Some of the most successful students are very exploratory. They don't just ask questions about how to solve the problem that I asked them to solve. They also ask questions about what would happen if something changed or how to solve a related problem. And if you get in the habit of exploring in that way, you might learn the material even better than if you just work through the required questions. And a great way to make progress is to ask somebody else. And so that's why we have such a large staff. There's also your peers. You're welcome to work together in this class. And now that we have over 2,000 students enrolled, waitlisted, or applying for concurrent enrollment, we'll have a unique and special community that can contribute to your experience as long as you're willing to reach out and work with them. There are many parts to this course. Lecture is a part of the course. That's where you'll be introduced to the course material. Videos posted to 61A are posted before each live lecture. And I strongly recommend that if you choose to watch the videos, you watch them the day they're released. If you watch them the next day, that's probably OK. If you watch them two days late, it's very easy to fall behind this course. And that can be quite problematic down the line. So just watch them the day they come out, and you won't have to worry. But lecture is not where you learn computer science. Lab is where you learn computer science. The most important part of this course is when you practice what you've learned by applying it to new problems. And that happens in lab, which will start next week. There's also discussion section, which is the most important part of this course. Discussion is where you put down your computer for a while and think through problems using pencil and paper without having the computer involved. Thinking through problems in advance is a 
critical skill to computer science and programming, and we practice it a lot in this course. We'll also have office hours, not just my office hours, but over 20 hours a week of staff-led office hours where you can drop in and ask questions. And I think that's the most important part of the course. Now, I've listed all three of these things as the most important part of the course, and that's because I don't know in advance what's going to be the most important. Whichever it is, is up to you to discover, so participate in all of them, and then decide for yourself what matters most. There's also a textbook on composingprograms.com. Some students tell me it's best to read the textbook before they watch the lecture. Some students think it's better to read it afterwards. There are a few students who don't read it at all. That's not a good idea. You should definitely read the textbook in addition to watching lecture. That's the best way to learn the material well. We'll have weekly homework assignments, two midterms and a final, and four large programming projects. That's a lot of material. But we also have a lot of optional special events, sometimes in the evenings, in order to make sure that you can finish all of this required work. Our goal is to set up the course so that there's a lot to learn, but for students who are willing to put in the time and effort, all of you can be successful, and we try to build a support structure around the course in order to make that possible. And my goal is not just to teach you a lot in a short amount of time, but also to give you a sense of the value of working with others while you're in college so that you get used to using your peers and your teaching staff and instructors as resources.